Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. It's Grant Cameron. I have a very interesting guest with me tonight, Nancy Timms, who is a former U.S. military and one of the more important people that I say that you need to talk to in the world, and that is she's an experiencer. I always say that you cannot learn anything from the UFO phenomena by watching lights fly around in the sky. You have to talk to the people who are interacting with the intelligence, and we have one on tonight. So good evening, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. And you're down in Mississippi, you told me, and uh, you um, ha have your own website. Can you tell a little bit about your background and the website that you started and how you got down this little rabbit hole of being an experiencer? Absolutely. Um, well, I started the, uh, the website five or six years ago, and that was like my first jumping in, putting my toe in the water. Um, the interdimensionals and extraterrestrials always told me that I would know when the time is right. And it was, it felt good. It felt, you know, everything fell into place. It was like the universe is working with me. And I believe it was. And so I started the Facebook group, which is the same name, Time, time for Disclosure. And then I added slash, we have never been alone because I truly believe that. And then I added we are the disclosure because I do believe humanity, us or each in higher consciousness, we are all a part of this. We do not need governments to tell us anything. And by the time we reach our higher consciousness, we will know these things. We know these things in our subconscious and in our soul, but we have to reach that higher level of consciousness and see the world in a different way, have a new way of thinking and a new way of understanding the world around us. And we will realize we are the disclosure. We are unique human beings. We all chose to be here at this specific time. And this, this is an evolutionary phase that we're going through. And we are all a part of it. We chose to be here. And we are. We are the generation the world has been waiting on. We are the generation that will go down in history is making the step, being the stepping stones or starting the movement to a better human being experience because in, for decades, our experience, our human experience is not what it was intended to be. We have very short lifespans. We are manipulated and controlled and all these things will change simply by humanity waking up and understanding the world around us. Uh, we have been limited in our 3D world and we are reaching a higher dimension, which is not a physical place, it's higher consciousness. So with all this new intelligence, we will understand things that we used to think was crazy or not real. And our awareness will open up and we will be able to see that extraterrestrials it interdimensionals are not hiding from us. They are all in our skies. They are all in our solar system. We just cannot see it with our five. We only have the five senses. But as we progress, our awareness will change and we will be able to see these things. Beautiful. You you actually are sort of giving my speech. I, the way I describe it is uh, we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones playing in the Super Bowl. Most people don't realize there's a game going on and we got to play we're not only in the stadium, but we're in the, on the field playing the game, whatever this game is. So how did you come to know that you were something special? One of the expressions that um, uh, is said is God talks to everybody, but only certain people are listening. So how did you sort of discover that you are uh, in touch with a higher reality? And did it start as a child or is yes. you believe you were chosen? Oh, I was chosen and I made a choice. Um this has been going on for me all of my life. My first conscious memory started at two or three. And I remember I've had interaction interactions with them. And basically it has been a progression of working with me, getting me prepared to be who I am today. Not the Nancy Timms that the world around me programmed me into, but me to come to the realization throughout a slow process. And they didn't push me any further than what I was ready because it's just an import, it's important for me to have my human experience as it is to realize who I am. And I have a extraterrestrial consciousness and a human consciousness. 
And it took me a long time to understand all these things. And about two and a half years ago, they finally gave me a Kundalini awakening. And basically what they were doing was opening my subconscious up to my human conscious because the information that I was giving, they were giving me, I, I was questioning it. I, I, you know, I was like, where, where is this information coming from? Where is this coming from? I don't understand. So they gave me this because I am a top person that I need hands on. If I don't get to experience, I don't feel like I know anything about it. I need to experience things. I need to know firsthand. So rather than dibble dabble with me and telling me you already know, because I kept saying, no, I don't. They gave me the Kundalini awakening and that opened up everything. And it put all the pieces together from my childhood all the way up until now. And I'm 64 years old and it was not an easy process. You know, a lot of people say, I want to trade places with you. 20 years ago, if you had asked me this, I would have said, oh, you know, well, I wouldn't even have told a lot of people because of the, uh, you know, people didn't accept this. But, you know, they would say, you're crazy. What kind of Kool-Aid are you drinking? What are you smoking? All these things. So, you know, I learned to suppress it at a very early age. I figured out quickly if I wanted to survive in this world, there are certain things that you have to keep to yourself. And they helped me throughout this whole process of understanding. And they only told me throughout my life just enough for me to understand what was happening, but not so much that it would overwhelm my mind because this is a lot to process for any human being that has an experience with them. But for me, it's not what they look like. It is the frequency exchange. Their vibrational frequency is so much higher than a human being. You feel that. It radiates through your body and through your soul. And you have feelings and emotions that start coming out that you don't recognize this. These aren't the kind of feelings and, and soulful things that happen on a everyday human life. So our brains at first really do, not, we just do not know how to handle this. So I think that a lot of people that have had experiences mislabel it because the fear overwhelms them just like it did me at times. And I still have to work with that and remind myself, I know what I'm doing. I want to flow through the experience. I want to have full consciousness because if you start having all this anxiety and you start having emotional uh, fits, they will simply tap you on the head and put you in a trance-like state where you're fully functional, but it's without all the emotions, without all the drama involved. And that makes their task, their agenda easy to do. And it also, it's doing you a favor because you're still able to have the experience, but it kind of turns off that fear mode and you just kind of lay back. But the problem with that is when you come back, your memories are fragmented, which I realized I didn't like that. And I realized through my conversations with them, I had to work on the fear. It's just something that we all have to experience. And that's why so many people, once they have that fear, their perception of what of the experience is, they don't even know what really happens after that. That's all they really know. And then everything up their mind has come up with to try to fill in the, the missing parts, in my opinion. And I'm not saying I know everything. I do not. I do not pretend to know everything. But even from my experiences, we all have to face fears in our life and how we deal with it is, you know, how you work these things out. But when I was in my um, late twenties, early thirties, I witnessed my two sons being taken for the first time by some grays. And this was, we were on a vacation. I was in one bed with my ex-husband and my children were in the other bed and I felt their frequency. I always know before they're coming, I can feel it. It, it, wakes me up a lot most of the time so I was sitting up and so these were not the same three grays grays always travel in threes always and I've later found out that the three that come for me are not the same three that come for other people I am assigned 
this female gray and she's been with me and bonded with me since my birth and she is a reddish brown color and she's about four foot tall and she is a hybrid that was designed by the tall grays and the interdimensionals to do the legwork for them extraterrestrials and interdimensionals really don't like the density of earth and the coming back and forth so they created this hybrid to do that legwork so basically they have their own little groups of grays that come down to get the contactee, take you to craft. Once you're on craft, you don't see them anymore. You then are around the interdimensionals, the tall grays, the Nordics, the Arturians. And where I go is a mothership. And it's of many different races and many different beings up there. But back what I was started with that I witnessed my sons being taken. These were three foot tall grays and they were gray and they wore high collars and they had on robes. And when they noticed me sitting up, they came, one came forward, pressed me down and telepathically said, this is not about you, lay back down. And I did. And he put me in a sleep paralysis. And I know he's a male because I could feel the frequency and I just knew. And so I literally was wide awake, but I could not talk and I could not move. And I saw them take my two sons and take them for their experience. And at the time, I was very, very upset, very upset because it was the realization that this is not just about me. This is about my children. So at the time, I asked my children the next morning, which they were perfectly fine in their bed, if they had any memories or any strange dreams and no, they did not. I left it alone. My ex-husband at the time thought it was a crazy dream that I had. There was, you know, just wasn't willing to even go there. So, but when I got back home from the vacation, I sit down, I meditated with pure intention to them and asked them to please give me answers because I was so upset about what I had witnessed with my children. And um, I'm not a person that claims to call them down or anything like that. I, I meditated to them. They did come for me on their time when they, you know, when it was right for them, they came, they got me. They took me to a craft, took me before a group of elders is what they were called. And these elders were of inner dimension and they were from different races and I went before them and asked them my questions and they explained to me that I had made a decision before coming into birth, into my human experience to be a part of this, to be here at this time, to be part of an evolutionary experience for the human race that I was needed and I had agreed. And throughout my life, they would be coming to help me to remember this and to help get this in play and I told them I do not remember this and I was shaking my head and they presented me with a vision and the vision was seeing myself as a kind of a as a being kind of as a etheric interventional and I was sitting waiting and they came up to me and said it's time for your human experience and they were walking me along and I was watching this process and they told me that I would not remember any of this, but they would be visiting me throughout my life in preparation for the reason and purpose for me being here. And that is what has happened. So I do know now I was an interdimensional being before I came to earth. This is my first trip to earth. And I made, I chose to be here for this reason. And I am part of a mothership group that goes around from different galaxies, different universes, looking for races of beings that are ready for ascension, ready to evolve into the next step of becoming better beings and understanding the world and the cosmic realm, understanding our connections with planet Earth, understanding our connections with all living creatures on our planet, which all are living conscious beings and we were all created and put here to support each other and everything that we ever needed throughout our life to sustain us including our food our protection our, our medicines medicinal things 
were all put here for us. So we have a connection with trees, plants, animals that we just do not realize because we are all connected. We are all one. So throughout my life, they have ha I've had all these experiences and everything I realize. I've lived a lot of different places in the world. And I realize now, even working with the military, everything was something that they wanted me to do. And they helped instigate it and kind of open those doors for me real easily because me being the human that I am, I need to experience th these things. So they wanted me to see different cultures, see what it's like to the, the military to, you know, even when I, about a year and a half, a year ago, I lose track of time, uh, was less than a year, actually. It was back in August and September. They sent my son and I to Mexico. They wanted us to go down and meet an indigenous tribe there called the Zapotec. And we went up this mountain. It took us three hours to get up there. And when we got up there, nobody spoke English. It was not a tourist area. Uh, there was no power. Uh, there was no electricity at the time. Some places did have electricity. and But it was the most eco-friendly place I'd ever been in my whole life. And the people there... Um, my son and I both had experiences the whole time. They came to visit us every single night. And th my son throughout the day, he was out on, in, on day walks with this indigenous tribe at me. They would come for me in the evenings at night and take me out different places. They would never let us have our experiences at the same time. Now I understand, just like a lot of things I understand, he and I would are too concerned about each other so they can't take us at the same time because we would not focus on what it is they're wanting us to learn because I would be looking at him wondering how he's feeling wondering how you know is he okay and he does the same so we have different different threes that come for us and they take us separately and I also now know that the reason why they wanted me to witness my children being taken. They could have, they wanted me to see that. They could have done it and I would have never, ever known. But they wanted me to know. They wanted me to see it. They knew I wouldn't understand it at that time. But they knew now, and which I do, I do understand. I understand that. And it helps me to understand what other people that have these experience and think that they're horrible is because, because of our spiritual growth at the time when that happened. And because of my lack of knowledge, my lower consciousness, it was all scary and fearful. Now that I'm at a higher consciousness and a higher frequency, it all falls into place. And I understand it was all a process of trying to get humanity to where we need to be. And we are here, and that's why they are here now in great numbers. And they are all around our planet putting in frequencies of love, frequencies of unity. And they had incarnates like me come here, and we're spread out all over the world because this is not about one or two countries. This is a worldwide phenomenon. This is the whole world waking up. This is about us as a species becoming better human beings, learning to new ways of thinking, new ways of living. A lot of things in our life are going to change for the better. No more manipulation, no more control, no more toxins in our food, our water, our air, no more synthetic drugs. We do not need these things. Everything we ever needed was put here. And because of these dark forces or dark fractions of government, elites, cabal, elite, whatever you want to call all these dark forces, they have done these things intentionally to humanity to keep us dumbed down, to keep us from ever reaching ascension, to keep us at a lower consciousness, and also to keep us unhealthy by these things, pollutions all around us. And it's also a way that they control our population. They cannot make money off of healthy intelligent people so they keep us this way even our news outlets and everything is negativity is all around us 
what we're taught in schools, everything is to keep us controlled and in a negative world. So, but we are waking up. And when we do, we will realize that there's things in our DNA that have been suppressed because of these intentional things done, because they always knew that this day was coming and they've been fighting it and they still are fighting it, but they also know it is time. Their days are limited. We are the disclosure. We are the, we are the ones the world has been waiting on. And we are the ones that are going to make a change for the betterment of humans and our experiences here on earth will be longer lives better quality ai they showed me a whole thing while i was in mexico about ai they told me ai is a man-made tool we made it we control it keep it as a man-made tool always be in charge of your tool so and they show me visions where it, it will not take away all these negative things that we hear. It will not take away all these jobs, et cetera, all these negative things. It will, if used in the right way and if used for the betterment of all of humanity, it will create new types of jobs, jobs that are not even called jobs. They're called my service to community, my service to my life things that I love and enjoy doing. And they will not have to be working from nine to five. It will be a different way of living and a different way of understanding who we are, what we're capable of, our connections, not only to our earth, but also to the universe. Because what you've heard the saying, as above, so below, there's a reason for that. That's because we are connected to extraterrestrials and interdimensionals. We are part of the cosmic realm. They have just been waiting for us to wake up and realize it. So you got so many things. I got so many questions for you. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a talker you, like you. <laughs> you. Yeah, you 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 have the situation where I think you you would agree that their message is is love and oneness. We're all yes. together. We're all one thing. The world, the, the way the world looks like to me is that it's spiraling out of control. This idea of separation, me versus you, um, you know, the ego. Um, how, how, what's the time period in terms of because it looks like that side is is taking over this separation, hatred, um, all this, the opposites. And so how does this come about and what's the time frame in terms of this shifting to the other side? In extraterrestrial interdimensional reality, there is no such thing as time. Right. Okay. So in a lot of it depends on humanity. A lot of it, it is going to happen. It's going to happen. There's no question. It's going to happen. What happens in between these things is really up to us because humans are here on free will. And there are certain things they cannot do. You know, they cannot come down here and stop a war. They cannot come down here and cure everybody of a disease because people made a choice to be here. We are here on free will. And all, most of us, or all of us, I don't know why I said that, all of us have made soul contracts. We make decisions on how long we're going to be on this planet. We make decisions how long or what we're going to experience. So for me, I am in a planetary soul so they can do things for me that they might not be able to do for other people because of their contracts they made so there is no time frame i know that they're here and it's because of us reaching higher levels of consciousness and they're just waiting for the it to spread among all of humanity so it's really up to us and people like you people like me that we made a decision to be here and do this before we ever got here. We're playing out the game. We're, you know, like you were talking about, this is basically like a chess game. And we are understanding how to move the pieces. And that's what we're doing. So it's a matter of us reaching out and reaching humanity and the simple fact that they're putting frequencies all around us and the simple fact that at some point people are going to realize that all these negative things is the dark forces last chance. This is their last chance to maintain their control. They know 
Once they lose that, humanity is unstoppable. We're unstoppable. There's nothing to hold us back, and they know this. So they will be fighting tooth and nail. But when this happens, that's where my job comes in. This is where your job comes in. We have to step up, ignore that, so to speak. We know what's happening, but we have to continue on our path. And we will overpower because people like being around positive people. People like that energy. When you reach a, a frequency of positivity, it not it's like a common cold. It spreads around people. I can walk in a room and change the attitude of people. And the ones that, that don't like it, I'll make them so sick with kindness they will to walk away from me. They won't want to be right around me. So that's how you do it, is that you you maintain your pace, maintain the focus, and they will dwindle away. It won't happen overnight, but it will happen. Now, you talked about um, their um, taking your, your two children. I have a friend here. I want you to sort of talk to her for a second. Sure. Um, She's had a lot of experiences um, and she has situations where she has the triangle appears on her arm. I don't know if you've had that kind of stuff. Uh, this is not last weekend, maybe two weekends ago, she contacted me and she was, the fear overtakes people. So she was very afraid, yeah. even though she's had a lot of experiences and understands sort of what's going on. And it was the idea that her daughter was over and her grandson was over. So, of course, she was freaking out. And I said exactly what you said is you need to meditate and you need to uh, get in contact. So what would you say? Because you know what this, this is like. Because people, the fear yes. overruns people. They start to, they say, you can take me, but leave my children alone. And for me, it's a good thing for my children. They're kidnapping my children. Uh, so what would you say to her? Because she's still panicking. And I, I talked to her about it. And um, uh, how do you overcome this fear that seems to overrun people, their conscious mind? What I do is I meditate to myself. I ask my subconscious to open up into my human consciousness. I'm not afraid to know. Please enlighten me. Let me know what agreements I've made. Let, help me to understand who I am, not the Nancy the world around me has yeah. made, the Nancy that came here with a sole purpose. So what she needs to realize is that just like she has made contracts she doesn't remember. Her children have too. So she needs to meditate like you told her and ask herself, her inner self, come forward into my human consciousness and help me to deal with this. Give me clarity. Give me intel intelligence. Give me answers. And your our inner, our subconscious knows everything. It knows our past. It knows everything. So if you can, if you just get in tune with yourself and ask it, it will start answering some of your questions and it will bring a peace to, to her. It will be amazing. It will lift that burden off her, her shoulders and help her to relieve that fear because if she will look at it and, and another thing, too, is talking to other people that have been doing, I've been doing this for 64 years, so I've been doing this a long time, and I've gone through all these different little scenarios, so if she will go to these meetup groups, you know, like uh, Les Durant or, or Opus or Tessa or, you know, there's a bunch of different ones, but she will meet other people, and they will help her to piece things together and help her to think about the process. It's just like you've met Travis Walton. What he first thought about his experience and how he feels now is totally different. He understands now they saved his life. They could have left him there in the woods, but they did not. And they dropped him off in a place where people would find him. They didn't take him back in the woods. How long would it have taken, a, you know, humans to find him? They did the right thing, but it took him a long time to piece these things together and to understand it because we are all at a lower consciousness when these things first happen. And we have to have our spiritual growth and grow into this to fully understand it. 
And they understand this. And that's why they're, I'm saying they're patient. They're very patient. And if they will help us to understand. Another thing, she needs to meditate to them and ask them to help her reach that gap of understanding. So meditation is the key to them and within our her own self. Now, you're probably familiar with uh, Dr. Michael Newton, Life Between Lives, about the soul contracts that we make agreements to come in and we plan to meet certain people like you and I may have made a plan before we were born that we were going to do this interview and you were going to, I was going to interview you and all yeah. this kind of stuff that a lot of stuff is happening, not by accident. Right. So can you talk about the being uh, I found when I talk to experiences, there's usually one being you talk about a female that you deal with. Um, does, does she have a name? And is there one particular being that, that sort of guides you along and, and gives you instruction and how, and what's her role before you were born? Was there an agreement between you and and that that entity? No, she and I love each other. We are bonded. There is she was probably she's bonded with me in in my extraterrestrial in my interdimensional extraterrestrial life. She was bonded with me. She is like a little guardian, or, or you know, she gets me where I need to go, gets me back home, makes sure I'm in the bed, uh, and then when I'm on craft. It is a male uh, interdimensional that is about eight foot tall and has human like features, but definitely is not human. And he's very pale, almost luminescent looking. And that is because of their being in a higher dimension. You've heard of like in the Bible and different things, the shiny ones. Those could have been visions of people like us to, to people back in the Bible days. We would appear as shiny ones because our consciousness and our frequency is higher than what it was at that time, if that makes sense to you. So when I see him, he is more shiny, more luminescent because he is higher consciousness. So in when I speak to the female gray, who's reddish brown, um, when she's telepathically talking to me, I know she's female by her frequency. And I know I love her because I just, I know, I mean, I feel it, but we do not use names. Her frequency is her signature. They don't use names with me. They will, if I'm somewhere or whatever, and they want to get my attention, they will say Nancy, but we don't exchange names. Their signature is their frequency. When I'm on craft and I'm talking but telepathically, they're talking to me, tall grays or the interdimensionals. With them, I can sense inflection, like if they're trying to be funny a little bit or if they're trying to be stern, I understand that inflection. And can I also sense male and female with them, but not with the hybrid gray. And she is a hybrid, yeah. So she's not robotic. She's just, she's biological, but she's, that's her job. That's all she does is she's a, like a, a gopher. I hate to use that word. Yeah. I, I sometimes refer like, like people will say they don't wear any clothes. They have no sort of sex organs, but you can tell by their, whether they're male or female. Absolutely. By it's like, you, you know who they their are. Frequency, Same as you're talking also, about. I can tell by the, 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 the telepathic message sounds male or female with the interdimensionals and with them. Now, well, my understanding, human beings, we try to humanize everything. We try to put a name on everything. We try to make it into the drama that we're having here in this reality. In their reality, it is not, there's nothing human about it. And there is no drama. There is no negativity. There is no wars. As through evolution, they evolved all these negative aspects, all this warlike ways, all these things disappeared because of their evolution. It's just, it no longer served them. And that's what's going to happen to us. It will no longer serve us. And people even that we love and care about, sometimes we will have to walk away from because they're not going to move as fastly as we do to a more positive, higher frequency. And that's one thing that I've even been I'm talking to them because I don't like the thought of 
I mean, you still love them, but you have to walk away from that negative aspect, if that makes any sense. It, it's just the way the universe works. And so some people that are in our lives now, those things may change due to that. How do you, as a military, former military person, I know what you did in the military, but you know the military is pushing this threat narrative. How, how do you deal with uh, that in terms of? I was, I work for the Department of Defense and they put me with the Army and I was a civilian and I was a dental assistant for the Commander General of the Pacific Rim and I was a direct hire. I, I did, it was really strange. I was working with the Red Cross and was volunteering at a clinic at Schofield Barracks on Oahu. And he they, he and some other um, high-ranking officers, they hired me. They got me hired. And so I started working there. But, you know, it had nothing to do with extraterrestrials. It was uh, an experience. And it put me in a great position to see a lot of technology that everyday clinics and stuff don't have. So, you know, for example, when those mummies were in Mexico, that's that was the time frame I had just gotten back from Mexico. But when I was, I watched every bit of it, every single meal of it on, you know, it was live on YouTube, but I watched it. And the thing about, I didn't care about who the man was that was presenting this, what his prior history was. What I cared about was, the evidence. What I cared about, I wanted to see those x-rays. I wanted to see those Im those 3D images because those type x-rays are so different from the x-rays that we take in an everyday practice or even in our hospitals. When you look at a bone or when we take a picture of a tooth or a bone, we're, we're, we're taking the picture from this angle or from the back side of it or from the side of it. When you're doing 3D imaging, which is a very expensive technology that you don't see very often, it was I was in a teaching facility at Schofield Barracks, and so I and also at uh, Fort Benning, Georgia, at Love Love Dental Clinic, I was around the um, 3D technology. And when they take the X-ray, it goes in from like the top of the bone and sees all the way around every vessel, every little single thing. So. When they said they had 3D imaging of these mummies and they were going to go in and look at all these things, I knew, I knew if somebody had faked any of that stuff, it would stick out like a sore thumb. It would be flagged because you cannot cheat the 3D imaging. You know, it is what it is. And they, those were real. Wow. So, awesome. you know, and people were, didn't even stop to even think about anything like that. They all they thought about was the presenter, who it was, and they judged it before really yeah. Yeah. listening to the real evidence, which were those 3D images. Yeah, of course, they're not at that vibration. They're still at this simple vibration, which goes to another military question of the military is probably trying to get the technology. Do you think that they've gathered anything? Or are they going to use this to kill people with or? Um, because I they're into this idea of separation that, you know, everything is a, everything's a military secret and everything can be weaponized. And so what, what do you think is going on there? There's as many good people in the military as there is the negative factors. And I do know that they would love to put nuclear stuff up into space and that is not going to happen. And it's not because they're we are so special and they don't want us to die off. That, that is true. They don't, do not want us to. But what is so special is our planet Earth. Our planet Earth and all living conscious beings on our planet and our Earth is a living conscious being. They don't want our planet. So when we start playing with nuclear weapons and technology, not only does it, could it wipe us out, but it would wipe out the balance of nature, it would wipe out our planet, it would ripple out into the universe and affect them, you know, because as above, so below, whatever we do affects everything. And we just don't understand. So it's not just wiping out Russia and China. You know, this is, ta we're talking about our whole galaxy. It could ripple up and do things. So 
they're not going to let that happen. They're not. And the and the, I don't understand. The government knows this because they've come in and turned things off, turned things on. They have shot certain missiles down, you know. So there's definitely just I think just like in our government, there's there's a side that wants all this information to come out and to the, see the betterment of humanity. And then there's the ones that want to stay in control. And they are the part of the dark hats. So I think just as we have a pool where we are, there's as many people that want to say negative things as we, every time we say something positive and their sole, sole contract was to come here and do that. So those people are in political places and in office to do that same thing. So it's just a matter of um, patience on our part and let them, you know, they're they're trying their best, but in the end, they won't be able to do this. The, humanity is very large when you think about it. And that's who these extraterrestrials and, and interdimensionals are reaching out to is humanity. If we can wake all of humanity up and start taking control and walking away from these things that no longer serve us, our banking systems are breaking down, our religions are breaking down, all these things are breaking down because they no longer serve us. And our technology is to the point where we can either take it and leap and better ourselves, or it can destroy us if it put in the wrong hands. So there's some major decisions. We're at a pivotal point. This is big. This is big. And people are just going to have to wake up to do it. I, and I know that, you know, there might be some mi small mishap of a small nuclear thing that could happen. I hope that it doesn't. I don't know that it will, but I, if, and I hope it doesn't come to that. But if it did, it was because we need that to wake more people up. Yeah. The one, the one expression was that. Everything that has been built in fear must come to the surface to be reseen in a different light. So the the and all these guys, you know, you have a nine hundred billion dollar defense budget. It's not like these guys are going to suddenly, you know, shut it all all down and go try to find another job. You know, if you're a billionaire, you want to be a two two billion dollars. If you're a one star general, you yeah. want to be a two star general. And they think they're saving the world too. It, it's just their attitude of how they see things is is a little bit different. They're into the separation. And the ego and me versus you, and there's good guys and bad guys. Whereas the, I think, well, tell me what the message you think is from the beings. Is it oneness and love? This idea that everything is one, we are all connected. Yes. What, what is the main main message that they're trying to get across? We are all one. We are all connected. We are the disclosure. Um, it doesn't matter what the government does. We are the ones that should be taking control and making decisions our our life. And I think the thing is, is for us to learn. We don't need the okay from the affirmation from them. We will know in our soul and in, in our intelligence, we will know these things. And also that we are unique and we have lots of things about us. And there's certain things in our DNA uh, that will activate. And I'm not saying we're going to all become ma magicians or all these peculiar things. Uh, creation, it'll be just like creation. Everything is done in a pace that it is acceptable by all of humanity. They will never force anything. They will never uh, walk in here and try to control or force anything. We have to want these things and we have to all get to that point of understanding we are not alone in the universe and that they are billions of years ahead of us in evolution they are not gods they are not angels they are simply ahead of us and they all have souls and they believe in a creator source so and they played a part a part they didn't do it all they played a part in our creation meaning that some of our dna and stuff comes from different races in my opinion not just one race but um they they don't claim to have done everything. Can, can you describe, because we, now we're getting into this thing, you you describe beings, extraterrestrials, multidimensionals. What are these beings? Are they higher vibrating beings who can take on whatever form they want? Or are they actually from 
some planet where they're biological and they're, or are they just higher vibrating beings? Like the idea is remember who you actually are. You're, you're just a, a, a somebody playing a, a puppet on a stage. You are not the puppet. You are this higher dimensional being. So are they actual extraterrestrials or are they, you know, portraying this thing as interdimensionals? They are extraterrestrials. They are interdimensional because they're at a frequency in a dimension which are not physical places. And they could be here right now. They could be in this room with me right now. Yeah. They can be invisible or they can be seen. I've seen them do that. You know, they move things around. They've, they've done things with me to give me the affirmations that I needed. But they all came from a planet at one time, but most of them are, they all live on motherships and they travel all over. They travel all over to different galaxies and universe. So they can be a physical form or they can be invisible. They can be an etheric form. Um, they live much, much longer lifespans than we do. And when they get to the point where they want to change their vessel, uh, it's really not a very, it's, it's a very short process to change into a, a, a new living vessel. And, you know, they, there's a lot of choices that they have. So, and they're, and when I ask them, where are you from? Most of the times they tell me it's not in our dimension. I wouldn't understand it or be able to pronounce it. And that they live on motherships. And that's, you know, most of them have spent their whole lives on sh ships and traveling around and that the one that I belong to or I'm affiliated with that they're like emissaries they're like galactic emissaries that that's what they do because every race serves a, a collective function to the whole collect to all of them so some may be explorers, some may be scientists, some may be genetic scientists, you know, all these different things. But this particular group that I am affiliated with, they are like, I, I don't really know a word to call it. The closest thing I think of is emissaries. They are, and that's why I'm here, is to help humanity, to assist humanity. Yeah, that, that's where you you said the same thing that that I've heard other people say, is you wouldn't understand where we're from which indicates to me that it's a little more complex than they just came from some Mars or Venus. Oh, or no, 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 it's not. It's no, like, it's they like a very... Place. Like they're, they're, they're interdimensional. Yeah. Even a lot of the extraterrestrials are... Well, they're, we don't see them, but they're, I would, our solar system is filled with life. We just can't see it. <laughs> and some of them don't live on top of the planet like we do. You know, they could live like up in the atmosphere. They could live underground. You know, it's just, it's all very different. There's, and here's another thing too. I don't know if anybody else has mentioned this to you, but in their reality, okay, like for us, technology, I'm sitting here talking to you. We're having a conversation using technology. For them, their consciousness is their technology. It is not a separate entity like it is for us. So their ships, their craft are living conscious beings and their pilots are created and bonded, just like I'm bonded to that gray, female gray, the pilot is bonded to a craft. Nobody else can fly that craft. They're bonded. You know, so. Did, did, let me stop you there. Could you, can you describe, did they describe this to you? Because I wrote a book about this, about people that have flown the craft. This idea that the craft is alive. And you touch the craft and you become one with the craft and whatever you think is what the craft does. And people can go almost instantaneously where they want. I've got 36 people who said the same thing. So did they describe this to you, this process? Or do you hear this from other people, this process about the craft being alive? The craft is alive. It is living conscious being. And 
sometimes it will feel kind of like a mushroom, okay? And <clears throat> the reason why we can't fly the craft that we have is because it's nobody can. I mean, it's bonded to a genetically extra to a genetic extraterrestrial that is created for that function. That is his function. That is his okay. or fem he or she is is done. Humans that think that they have flown craft, they can do that. I mean, they used to fly me over cities and tell me I was a princess and these were my cities. They can take a, if I'm having a little, whatever, if my mother had read me a storybook, they can change the scenery around me and they can uh, take images from my mind. And to me, it appears like Donald Duck's. I'm playing with Donald Duck. It's really them. They didn't change into Donald Duck, but they changed the way that I see my perception. So I'm going to make a lot of people mad, but okay. People, for whatever reason, they let them think that they were doing these things, but there's no way they could. I mean, do you really think that billions of years of technology above us they're going to turn a human being loose with <laughs> well that's what didn't make any sense to me the first time it was a 75 year old lady told me this but when i heard three dozen people all tell me the same thing yeah. and it really wasn't on the internet i've started to wonder and the other thing that was pe peculiar was the fact that everybody that touched the craft everybody touched something different which yeah. seemed like totally impossible that you could have you would think everybody would say there's a panel you touch the panel but no there's well and not only that but if the government thought that a human could do this, well, they would have them. <laughs> they wouldn't be walking around telling these stories. But I'm just saying, in yeah. their minds, it happened. And it yeah. probably was a vision. It, you know, I understand how they do these things because their goal is to make every experience. They want us to... They don't want us to feel, yeah, okay, they're telepathic, right? Yeah. Okay. So, and they don't have all these emotions and things that human beings have, okay? So whatever I feel, they feel it tenfold the amount. They don't like that feeling. They don't know what to do with it. In their reality, there are no such things, of the, you know, these emotional things. So that's why they do tap people out to avoid that. And not only that, but sometimes, especially when you're younger, they will create things to keep you entertained and functional because they'd rather have you fully conscious and whatever it takes for me, like creating a storybook scenario or for somebody, they're actually getting to fly a craft, but they're not really flying a craft. Yeah, you even have the military. With uh, I show a video from 2004, University of Southern Florida, where I have a rat, 10,000 neurons from a rat brain flying an F-22 simulator. They log it in there, and it's flying this thing. And then they put wind, and they put rain, thunderstorms, and this little 10,000 neurons. And that was in the white world. You can imagine what's going on in the black world. And oh, even yeah. if you look at back at the Firefox, the movie Firefox with Clint Eastwood, where he steals yeah. the Russian thing and he flies with his mind, where he has the headband. And that's what the woman first told me was, you have this headband. It started with the headband. And anyway, uh, let me ask you another question. Um, on the ship, what, what is the purpose of you being on the ship? What are they doing with you on the ship in terms of your when I When I first get there, it's a process. Um, they are checking my mentality. They're checking my physical well-being. They're checking to see how I'm balancing my human life with my extraterrestrial life, interdimensional life. And they're looking at the, my social, spiritual evolution. You know, they've been working with my frequencies uh, throughout my life and I could have a whole story about how they did all that. Um, so, um, so when I get on craft, it, I am. It's basically like a I go to an exam room, and 
they do scans. And if I need something done, they'll fix it, you know. Um, and people talk about probes and all that. No, they are a billion years ahead of us. They simply have devices that just automatically know what needs to be worked on in your body. And the way that they work on it is uh, through higher consciousness uh, using I've had my kidneys worked on, uh, several things, and there's no knives or anything like that. It's all in higher consciousness. And they can even like take their essence and go into your body and like look around and do things too. I've had that happen. So it, it's it's very strange. But when I get there, I also know that there's a uh, there's always a group of peers watching me. And they're evaluating me, you know, saying, you know, how I am, you know, I feel like, to be honest with you, it's my family, my family, I have family there, and they're watching me. And they're evaluating me to see how I'm doing. Because throughout my life, whenever, it's very hard for a person, an extraterrestrial, interventional, interplanetary person to come down and have the human experience because we're not the, all these emotions and feelings and drama and stuff is very, very hard. And most people have a hard time, have their struggles. I've had struggles, failed marriages, uh, all kinds of stuff, you know, and whenever these bad things would happen, they would say, they would come to me and say, if this is too much for you, you can come home. But I always chose not to because I had children. But, and I understand my situation is very different. I don't know of anybody else that actually has that kind of relationship with interdimensionals or extraterrestrials. But I think a lot of it is because for me, I have been real receptive where a lot of people, even in my family, not my my sons have the same experience or my oldest son has the same experience, downloads, Kundalini, et cetera, all these things as I do. But there's other people that's in my family that simply didn't want to be a part of it and they didn't push them, you know, that kind of thing. So I, I, I evaluation process and then usually it's a learning like different experiences, learning different things. You know, it could be, well, for one example, one time I was on a, a taken to a craft where we're a group of explorers, and these were like all kinds of aquatic beings, greys, Nordics, whatever, Palladian. I have a hard time knowing the difference uh, in interdimensionals, and there were human beings. And we were on a craft that were looking for creatures that had jumped a dimension. They were over, say, for example, like Bigfoot or like uh, what people call it, Chupacadra. Or what I saw was a cat, uh, between a cat looking like, a, it was just a huge cat, but it was more like a fox type cat. It was strange. But anyway, so we were all there on the craft and they had these screens up, which was not like our computers, but it was screens. And they were like looking for heat sensors of creatures in different parts. And when they would see one was like, say here on earth, then we would load up, everyone would get in position and then we would go and they would go to where this creature was. And then the team, which I only was observing, I did not participate at all. I simply was an observer, but they would get together, go down, get the creature, which I now know people call cryptids. I didn't know that at the time. They would put it on craft and then they would take it back to the proper place where it belongs. In other words, like uh, like a lot of people talk about seeing a UFO around a Bigfoot sighting. What that is, is that when human, they're not supposed to to be seen by human beings because they are not from this dimension. So if they create havoc or if they start being noticeable and they get, they know when these things happen, their job is to go down, collect them, and then take them back to where they belong. So if they're out in the woods not bothering, interfering with humanity, 
they're okay. But the minute that they cross that bridge, which they're not supposed to do, there's like universal cosmic laws of, of that you're not supposed to do, then they go collect them and then take them back. And that's why people misunderstand. They don't know why they're seeing a UFO with the UFO, UFO, the ETs are there to get them. Hmm. Interesting. Um, before you're born, uh, can you go through that process? Like where does this, um, where they're showing you what you're going to do in your next lifetime? And what were you in your last lifetime? Like what, what kind of role did you play there? I was, um, well, I know that I am part of a, a like a, a team that, that looks for these things. I know that, I know that my, I don't think that my family there wanted me to do this, but I did. Um, and I know that a lot of it had to do with, with something in medical. I was something involved in medical. Yeah. Because I still have experiences where I am doing medical and dental work, but not on human beings, but I'm, I'm there doing things, working on different creatures and doing things in the medical dental profession. Yeah. In, in that relation. And then you made an agreement to come on or how does that take place? Do they show you what your life's going to be like? Are, are the events that are happening to you random? Or are they things that you plan to meet certain people or it, do they give it's you really strange. All my life, there are certain things that I knew was going to happen, but I didn't know why I knew. And I, I just thought it was a thought that I had. But now I understand my subconscious has always known all this. It's just my human consciousness had to wake up and understand you know and that was a big process and really and truly I was very still confused until they gave me the Kundalini awakening I, I was still pretty like real questionable on everything you know like because you know you it, uh, you grow up and you're told that people are insane that talk about these things you're told that it's demonic you're told all these different things it's very hard when you know in your heart that you love what's happening, but everybody in the world's telling you, you know. So for me, I didn't like going to church because I felt like not only did I know something they didn't know, but I didn't understand why I felt so different from everybody else. You know, it was very hard. It was a, it's a, it's a not a hard, it's not an easy process by any means. And, you know, a lot, I can understand why a lot of people just dismiss this or suppress it because it can be too much at times. But but you did agree. I mean, you you yeah, yeah. That, you did agree to do this. That yeah, but I would not be punished if I didn't continue it. I've heard some people say that they said that if I didn't write a book, they would. Do, <laughs> you, know I mean? you know, I've heard all these crazy things. That's not true. Those things are just I don't know where those people go. <laughs> I really don't, but I do know that they're very loving and, you know, I know they want me to do things. And I know also that when I do these things and they're happy with me, I am rewarded in ways that nobody would understand. For example, I was riding in my car through an Amish community in a county over a, another county. And I had gone and talked to these mental therapists about they need to become aware of abductees and become aware of disclosure, become aware that people will start to wake up and they will need counseling or they will need meetup groups in this area, you know, because this is a Bible belt down here. And so, you know, and it went well. But when I left, I was thinking, golly, I just talked to like 10 women about who all are mental therapists and they can all get together and just say, we need to get her help. And so I was sitting there, you know, busting my brain going, God, I hope I did the right thing. I hope I did the right thing. Then telepathically, they said, look to your left. And I looked over to my left and there was a craft sitting there out in the middle of Amish, in an Amish community in a sun hall, like a big field of flowers. And that was their way of, that was their reward to me. And no, I didn't stop the car and take pictures. No, because it wasn't for the world. That was for me. And I don't care if anybody believes me or not. I know, you know, and and, and that's all that matters. 
you talked about your awakening. Can you explain to people that may not know uh, what a Kundalini experience is oh. and describe what happened to that event? And yes, it scared me to death. And it was a month before I even talked about it to anybody because I, I didn't understand what was happening to me at the time. I was asleep. All of a sudden, my, I, my body was pulled forward, sitting upright, and my head was up like this. And it was like surges of energy came down all the way to the my trunk, to my waist. And then it went back up and then I would go back down and then it would pull me up. And it did this like three times. And then after it was over, then all of a sudden I had a uh, experience that was a combination that felt kind of like out of body where you're kind of like going through like this tunnel vision thing. But it was also... It was weird. It was like I was walking through my closet and then the closet turned into a craft. And then all of a sudden the craft turned into like a meeting room with other humans and they were all sitting in a circle. And now I think it was probably a, other humans that had had a Kundalini awakening. And that was an opportunity for us to talk and meet or a, a way of showing me how I need to figure out what happened to me to understand it. But at the time, I just wanted to know my way home <laughs> because I didn't know if I was alive or dead. I mean, honest to goodness, I, I did not know. I mean, I, I you know, I, I I had no understanding of what it was or anything. And after about a month, I started talking with my son and he had the same thing happen to him. And, so, and that's what's beautiful it was now that he's in his he's 42 and now we can have these wonderful deep conversations about these things he has me i have him and it's so nice you know because before i never had anybody that i could talk to and i felt very alone and i'm just so thankful that he doesn't have to go through that part of it you know that's well, what, really what does he see as his role is it similar to what what do you think your role is here he Did sees he himself a as a emissary um also he sees himself as being here to assist me he thinks he's here because of me to assist me i think he's here i think he's got a purpose in quantum computer technology and all these things because in their reality consciousness is that technology and that's what since he was in the like eight or nine years old he was already, he knew how to hack into computers. He was writing programs, all these things. So there's something there, but he hasn't, you know, right now he thinks he's here because of me and all that, but he's here for his own reason, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Well, so he's, he's sort of like one of these, you hear that quite often with the, it's almost like they're star children that have these special abilities, which leads to the question of uh, the, the surveys that have been done, paranormal phenomena. Have you had a lot of paranormal phenomena in your life? Can you talk about a little bit about that? Oh, I've seen a ghost and I've seen Bigfoot. Uh, when I was in high school, uh, avid canoe or Albert, my family was very outdoors. We were the type of family that camped and had the trailer on the back that says we're from Tennessee and bright orange <laughs> <laughs> and all the stickers of every state, you know. Uh, but anyway, so. We were on a canoe trip. I was in high school. I was in the front. My sister was in the middle. My dad was in the back. And all of a sudden, we heard we had this horrible, horrible smell like a wet dog. Only it was like, like really, really horrible. And my daddy told us to be quiet. And he told us to take our uh, paddles inside the boat and to be really still. And so we let the current take us around a, like a corner or a bend. And then all of a sudden, when the Bigfoot saw us, it was just like, it was out in the water. It was like right before nighttime, you know, when it's still daylight, but like dusk. So it was either bathing or getting fishing or whatever. And it wasn't expecting us. And it just went crazy, you know. And by the time it started doing all that, it was, we couldn't see like uh, anything like the color of eyes or, or like whether it was male or female or anything, because it was making such a commotion. So that was when I was in high school and my father knew immediately, he says he didn't, but he had to have known because I know now that he 
had us put the paddles in because he didn't want us to look aggressive to to the animal. You know, he he did it perfectly, and I I, I know he had to know. And then when I was working at Fort Benning, Georgia, I lived off post at Fort Mitchell, Alabama, and there is a what's where there was a big Confederate battle there, and there's a lot of uh, cemeteries and stuff. And I was sitting out on my back part porch about nine o'clock at night, something like that. And I was at my German Shepherd dog. And all of a sudden, this Confederate soldier just comes marching across my backyard. And he <laughs> had like the little lunch, like the little uh, bucket lunch pail swinging from his arm. And he had a like a, a, a gun thrown over with a head, like the bayonet type thing sticking out and had his hat on and he was just marching along. And he wasn't in color. He was more of a luminous, ghosty, whitey looking thing. And he never looked at me and he just trucks right along. And my dog just sit there. I just sit there. Neither one of us was scared or alarmed. I was not scared at all, which was surprising, but it did not scare me. It's like, I don't know. It just didn't scare me. And so it walked all the way down past the edge of my property line and got behind a tree. And when it got behind the tree, I walked out and looked and it just disappeared. You know? Fascinating. Yeah, F yeah fascinating. it was. It was, you know, but then again, at those times in my life, there was nobody to talk about. They just thought, man, what are you, what are you, you know, what are you doing? You know, what are yeah. you, why are you seeing these things? And I was like, okay, I'm not going to talk about this. Yeah, a lot, a lot of experiencers have reported near death experiences and out of body experiences. Have you had those kind of events? Oh yeah, I've had a, out of body experiences too. That's really unusual. It's 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 kind of scary until you remember what it is. For me, I have to remind myself what's happening because it's just not normal. But it, it's really it's really cool because uh, you, you know when you go out of body. You can go anywhere, and I've remote viewed. Uh, they and I know that the interdimensionals were doing this, but even like when I would be in Memphis, Tennessee, my son was having a, in a soccer tournament, and I had these big, huge, mastiff dogs, and they were puppies at the time, and I was worried about them. So <laughs> I remote viewed and went to my house, went all through my house, making sure they were okay, and. You know, and it's really funny. I also found out too, um, this remote viewing is that extraterrestrials and stuff, they can pick up on you. If you like go into a spaceship or somewhere like that, they know they know you're there. Where you might can if you go around someplace here on Earth, you might not be seen, you know, but up in the cosmic realm. They know you. They it's the they feel the frequency, and it's just like, for example, I feel the frequency and know before they're coming. But also, I've been places here in Mississippi, shopping at different times, and I ran into a extraterrestrial that was down here experiencing the human life, and I felt their frequency, and they felt mine, and they were drawn to get close to me, and I was drawn to pay attention to what they were doing and stuff too. So that's happened quite a few times. So so that you would agree that it's it's sort of the idea that's all frequency. Everything, everything vibrates. Yes. And so that's like a lot of people will say that you know they know they're coming. They're gonna they're gonna be here tonight or yeah. the famous Chris Bletso story where he's with John Alexander and he's standing by the car and he said, they're here, John, they're here. And he said, how do you know they're here? I just know they're here. And now it's like but this thing appears and so you, it is a vibration thing, and that yeah, that, I guess it's a that, vibrational frequency that you feel, and it's it, it the closer they are to you, it increases. So that's how you know, and everything is free, it's frequency, and you know everything's telepathic. So their frequency is their signature. That is their name. Every all of us, have, like in other words, when I'm, they're all telepathic, but when so when I'm in their reality you don't hear the whole world like we see on tv like if you're telepathic you would hear everybody what's going on in their minds and stuff it's not like that when you're with them it's like 
everybody has their own assigned frequency, their own, and that is their signature, that is their name. And so you know who it is, you know, I don't know how to explain it. It's very different, you know. And that would be how they find you. I mean, you yes. can't hide. They would, they would, they oh, would no. know. I, I, I tried that. <laughs> <laughs> I moved to Australia. That's about, I mean, you know, they found me. And I moved <laughs> way up on this mountain, Mount Me, up in the Queensland, uh, you know, like out in the outback and stuff. Oh, they, they, that doesn't matter wherever you are. They, yeah, they know. Were you trying to run from that at one point? Not really. I, I was basically, I had gone through a really bad divorce and, I was basically running for my human life and I just wanted, you know, get divorced and I'm going to see the world, you know, just, yeah, yeah. you know, and so I moved to Australia and lived there for about five years and it was a wonderful experience. It really was. But I came back because it's too expensive to live there. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you feel lucky? Do you feel like this has been yes. a good life? And yes. how, how would you look at reality in terms of explaining to people how, what, what's the world really about? I mean, the, concepts of God and beginning and end and all this kind of stuff. What what can you tell people from your experience at this higher level, getting instruction from beings that know more than we do? What 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 should people know about how the world actually works? We are at we are we're we're at an evolutionary point to where we have so many options that the souls in the past did not have. We can now by knowing that we have a soul and a consciousness and that we get when we run when this vessel runs out our soul and our consciousness moves on we can make choices and the thing about it is is that we will know that we're here to have experiences and we will work at being better human beings and work at getting those tasks done rather than not knowing and just doing crazy things and so many people come back and have to repeat this cycle. It's like a never ending cycle because they don't get it right. So we will come to a higher consciousness level to where we have an understanding of these things so we can get that right. So then when we do leave this vessel and get up and go up above the elder to the elders and creator source, if we have done all the things that we wanted to experience, then we have the choice. We could be an extraterrestrial. We could be a dolphin. We we you know, do other things, or we can stay in a non-physical etheric state and just stay at the highest dimension, which there's more than 12, by the way, we can stay up there and, and we are immortal. We, we, you know, we are immortal. Our life does not end six foot down under the ground. Yeah. Beautiful. And, and, but you can come back as you did. If you want to, yes. higher vibrating, you came down to help. It's like, Sometimes people talk to me about, oh, they want to get off the karmic wheel. And I say, I always say to them, like, how many billion years do you think you can sit on the on the beach in Hawaii and drink Mai Tais? I mean, if your son is in trouble, you're going to say, no, nah, I'm drinking Mai Tais. I'm not, I'm not going to go help. That we yeah. sort of like, that's your mission, I think. You came down here. Absolutely. You know? And I lived in Hawaii for almost five years. So I know you that you can get tired of a good thing. So <laughs> these things are all done with intention to, because... I had to experience it to understand it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So finally, let's get to your mission. Like your to talk about your website and what you can do for people and what because you've got a few years left to live. What what are you intending to do and and in terms of uh, making the world a better place? My goal is to go to the United the United Nations and talk to them and get them on the bandwagon. I don't know that that will happen, but that is my goal. My goal is to talk to as many countries as I can. And I've, I've been talking to Germany, Belgium, all over Europe, Mexico, uh, Thailand. I've, I've got a long list already. And I, you know, and I want to meet more people like me. And I think I've met one, but I think that we're all far apart. I think we're pretty far apart. And I think that is done with the intention of like ranges, you know, for us to read. But at some point, we hopefully we will all meet. But um, my goal is to help humanity. I, you know, I, 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 this is not something that, um, this is not about me. This is not about me. And, you know, this is about my purpose, my mission here. And my son feels the same way. This is our purpose and our mission. This is why we are here. We are here to have this experience. And this is this is the 
the program. This is this is our mission. And the goal is to to do it the best we can. And I, you know, I don't know how it was all gonna play out and turn out, but I'm gonna do everything in my power to open opportunities and I let things kind of happen. You know, I do like, I, you know, I, I ask you if you would have me on, you know, I, I do my part, but I also uh, let the interdimensional seem to open a lot of opportunities for me as well. You know, so I kind of let things happen organically and, you know, um, and eventually someday I might write a book because I'd like for my grandchildren to appreciate what I, you know, because it hasn't been a bed of roses, you know, it has not. And they, I want them to, you know, to appreciate uh, and laugh at the people that say, oh, your grandma was crazy, <laughs> you know. Good for you. I actually have a company called It's All Connected where I sort of direct people on how to do write their story. And I always tell people you've written a story for your children and grandchildren because 500 years from now, everybody's going to think we lived at the time of Jesus. Like those people were so lucky and is to record, even though, because now you can publish a book, have one copy is in, and have it shipped to you and it costs you about $10 and you can put it on a shelf and never publish it. And at least your story is there recorded for history. The fact that you were here and and uh, and did your part and uh, it'd be fascinating reading. And I think a lot, and probably you probably get that from the beings that they want you to tell their story. They don't want I you do. hiding yeah. Do, yeah. do you have a do you have a do you deal with people individually or do you lecture or how would people want to contact you if they want to talk to you have questions to you like my friend who's you know has this this issue of her children and grandchildren and stuff like that how would people contact you and well on facebook time to disclosure uh slash we've never been alone slash we are the disclosure and also my website time for disclosure.com and I am trying to be more active. Um, I am trying to be more active with MUFON. Unfortunately, in Mississippi, it's not a very active group. You know, I would be willing to do some things like that. I've just got to make the right connections. I am going to start trying to go to some conferences and speak, you know, uh, mainly for the connections, you know, to meet the right people and stuff. I probably won't mingle a whole lot with the, their own connections, so to speak you know, um, and enjoy my family while I'm there, that kind of thing. But um, yeah, so I want to be more active and I want to, I want to, I want to branch out and do this. I want to try to reach as much, as many people as possible and hopefully help spark other people that's had experiences that might be afraid to come out. You know, they may be sitting on a boatload of information that could be very beneficial to all of us. And if I can get that, even with just one person, that would be amazing. So, yeah. Because it's true, you are, the, you are the ones we've been waiting for. I keep telling people all the time, you got to talk to the people who are interacting with the intelligence. Forget about the lights in the sky and all that kind of stuff. There's, there's people who are actually in contact with whatever this is we're dealing with. And uh, right now they're not really being acknowledged the way they should be, but that time will come. So thank you for what you do and, and for stepping out and I'll do whatever I can to help get your message out there. I appreciate that. Thank you for having me. I really do appreciate it. Beautiful. Hang on.